What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unusual Suspects. I am your host, a very unusual person, Vincent Oshana. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. First, I'm gonna go around and introduce everybody. We have one of our unusuals, Humberto, is in the house all the way from Chile. We got Connor, who's actually Jamaican, people don't know about that. We got Shane, who's an amazing writer, as well as Connor for Valuetainment. And today, we have a new unusual. Uh, she's very special, very, very loud. She wears loud colors. She's, you know, she pushes a lot of people. Uh, Alicia Daniels, Alicia, take a second and tell everybody who you are really fast. Hello, I'm Alicia Daniels and I work at Valuetainment and I'm the social media manager and I'm so excited to be here with you guys. So you're in, you know, your, your foot is in the fire. You know what's yeah. happening in the world. So we're yeah. going to pick your brain about your story. Yes. And so, so speaking of stories, you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, later on, a Doritos hired some, a random crazy person. Homosexual whales, that's a crazy story. Tesla, we're gonna talk about Tesla and what they're doing over there. The movie Dune 2 just came out, which I think me and Kelly are gonna watch that tonight. Late viewing, if you're down. And she didn't even know about it. And then you're gonna be talking about right. Ryan Garcia. But um, before we get to those stories, I am, like, listen guys, I get excited once in a while, not a lot. Uh, I've seen a lot, but when I have these type of guests, I look so forward to these uh, type of conversations. Uh, so our newest, besides Alicia, I'm truly honored to introduce our newest unusual suspect. He is a former deputy assistant to the President of the United States. He is a powerhouse in conservative thought and national security. He's an author, strategist, media personality, and a relentless defender of conservative values from advising the president to dissecting global affairs on his own radio show, America First. He brings an unparalleled and, which is one of my favorite, unapologetic blend of intellect and passion, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Sebastian, how are you doing, my friend? Well, much better. I'm going to have you be my pitch man wherever I stand <laughs> up, because that was quite, quite the introduction. But before we get down to business, I want to commend you. You were on my show recently. Uh, it was a superb, superb interview. God bless you for your patriotism. Everything that uh, PBD and the team is doing at Valuetainment, and most important of all, humor guys you get humor conservatives have forgotten the power of satire so whether it's the uh, biden brain freeze ice cream <laughs> skit i just posted on all my social media or the uh, desantis heels keep doing what you do guy because it is superb i appreciate you sebastian thank you and I, I we say this all the time the only thing that we have for for comedy for political you know besides babylon b i mean snl is just constantly just bashing it's like hack Trump, 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 Trump. So we decided, you know, we got to kind of make fun of, we got to make fun of everybody. Cause like you said, I made fun of Biden. I make fun of DeSantis. We got we to gotta keep it fair on the, on the playing field. But I think, uh, I think it's time to, you know, we stop taking each other so serious in a serious climate, Sebastian, which gets me into, you wrote your article um, and it was labeled the real reason they hate Trump, Sebastian. I'm just quoting a couple of things off of, uh, off your interview. You said, uh, to our nation is split along the answers to one question. Do you love America or do you hate America? Do you believe this is the greatest, freest nation ever created by a man, shining city on the hill, founded on unalienable rights derived from our being uh, made in the image of our creator? And do you believe the radicalized Democratic Party, uh, we are intrinsically bigoted country, ribbon through the neo-colonial attitudes and run by uh, as patriarchy where women are minorities uh, are oppressed. Sebastian, where, where do you see that we are right now as a nation? Um, we're seeing what's happening with Trump. We're seeing what's happening with the left and they're legitimately unwavering and undeniable. They're not even hiding what they are trying to do. Where are we, Sebastian? And do you think that the future like, looks bright uh, where we're heading? Well, look, thanks for mentioning my, my new article on, on my Substack, sebastiangorka.substack.com. It, it, it's based upon a realization I had on my radio show a couple of years ago that the old labels, Vincent, like Republican, Democrat, or conservative versus liberal, very relevant, right? In, in 2016, we created something new. We had working class Americans vote for a billionaire from Manhattan, and the whole political landscape changed. And then if you put that into the context of the last three years, I am convinced of the fact that the real dividing line in America today is between those who love this nation as the greatest nation on God's green earth and those who hate it. 
because we are living in a perverse age. Think of this, and this isn't just a uniquely American phenomena. You'll find this in other countries as well, but we are being run, our nations are being run by a quote unquote elite that actually hates their own nation and their own civilization. Don't take my word for it. Remember what Obama said when he was running for the presidency. He said, we are going to fundamentally change America. Well, you don't fundamentally change something you love. Try that with your wife. Tell your wife, your girlfriend, I love you, honey, but I'm going to fundamentally change you. You'd be on the couch or in the doghouse if you tried that. And look at what this Biden regime has just done in the last three years. When you look at every issue from giving billions of dollars to our enemies, the mullahs in Iran, whether it's opening the borders and having Americans murdered by illegals like this beautiful 22-year-old young lady, Lake and Riley, uh, whether it's, whether it's the, the uh, embracing of, of anti-Semitism, the genocidal cries of from the river to the sea, ask one simple question. If you wanted to destroy America, what would you do differently in the last three years? And the answer is nothing. So really, it's not about politics as usual. It's about getting back our freedoms as our founding fathers intended it. How do I look at the situation right now? Uh, you've heard this every two years. This is the most important election in your lifetime. Well, guess what? This time, it's actually real. If the radicals, if the radicalized DNC, this is not your daddy's de Democrat Party, it's not your grandfather's, you know, JFK, Scoop Jackson, they wouldn't be allowed into a, a Democrat Party of squad members today. If they win the election, they will lower the voting age to 16. They'll pack the C Supreme Court. They'll redistrict everything, and they'll continue to use the courts as a political weapon. So the, the situation is good, especially after last night's results with the, the, the 14 out of 15 sweeps for my former boss. But the stakes in November could not be more serious, my friend. So, uh, Sebastian, um I, I, I ask this question a lot, and I because think about it, the people that are making these decisions, the the left, the elites, the the Democratic Party, all the stuff that they're doing to destroy this country, which is blatantly obvious, they have to live in the same country that they're doing all this, all the illegals, all the all these bad decisions. What if if they have to live in this country that they're doing this to? What are they being promised something, Sebastian? Because I mean, evil. You know, you, I, I believe in God and I believe in the devil. When you make a deal with the devil, they don't, the devil doesn't stay true to his, to his contract. Like these people still have to live here. So what, what's, the, what's the end goal for these, for these people that are doing all these bad things to us? Well, look, uh, some of these people are truly evil. Uh, I think the most evil person in the administration is Alejandro Mayorkas. That, that man knows, yeah. as Secretary of Homeland Security, that when he opened the borders for Biden, thousands of women of young girls would be raped every single day by the coyotes. This isn't Sebastian Gorka talking. This is left-wing organizations like Human Rights Watch, like a UNHCR, that say upwards of 60% of those trafficked are raped as they, uh, as they are you know, trafficked across the border. People like that are truly evil. For the rest of them, uh, you, you made a mistake, my friend. They, they don't live in America. I mean, the elite is in this Kevlar ensconced bubble where the real world doesn't touch them. They, they've never had to pay for a tank of gas. They, they've never had to go to the grocery store and, and you know, eke out the 30% increase in prices because they live in these elite bi coastal cities that, isn't, they, that aren't touched in their elite bubbles. Look, look at what um, we had occur the night of, of the primaries. You, you had the former press secretary to Joe Biden, Jen Psaki, laugh about the vote. I live in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and so does she. She revealed it on air. And she looked at the exit polling from Virginia, and she said, it's so weird, all these people who voted for Trump last night, they were asked, what's the pri primary issue that concerns you? And they all said the border. And she said, ha, 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 last time I looked, I live in Virginia, and this isn't a border state. We don't, we're not up against the Mexican border. Oh, yeah, really? That level of arrogance? Tell that to the father, Scott Smith, of the young girl who was raped by a transgender illegal in the restroom of her school, the, the, the school which then had the executive transfer that illegal to another school, 
try and hush it up, and then he raped again. These people don't have to deal with real life because they are a completely isolated elite. That's why they think, oh, it's so funny, immigration of illegals at 12,000 a day, That's that people are worried about that? Well, why don't they ride in a big limo with me to Martha's Vineyard? Oh, uh, Sebastian, you brought up the border. Uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before the, a report came out. That, and by the way, I agree 100% about Mayorkas, his 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 that his little smug that that face that he makes, I, I can't I cannot stand that guy. Which I think with, with this story, this is the definition of treason. Yesterday, a report came out uh, that Biden, uh, his administration, admitted to transporting 320,000 illegal migrants on secret flights into the United States. Uh, Customs and Border Protection refused to disclose information about a program last year secretly arranging these flights of all these illegals, and uh, it means that while the, the record numbers of migrants were flowing over the southern border last year, the Biden White House was also directly transporting them into the country. So uh, besides the votes, besides the votes and, and, and you know, the, the drugs and the child trafficking and what the past, what, three years, I think, Sebastian, we've had the most, I think we're having more illegals come into the country than actual uh, Birth, birth in the United born. States. It, what I mean, I think the damage has been done, Sebastian. So is this was this the nail in the coffin for these mail in ballots, illegal votings? Was this their cheating method that they're just solidifying? Is that is that and they don't care about the rape right. or they don't care about all the crime that's happening. Are they that stuck on this power and this power trip yeah. to keep their power that they're willing to just do all this and not get in trouble for it? Well, I think the answer to that is obvious. When, when you, you, you threaten the leader of the opposition, President Trump, with 730 years in prison, th then you know what they're prepared to do. It's all about power. Uh, on the issue of, of the border and, and the, the scale of it, let's just be clear. I know you're a veteran, and, and I wanted to illustrate this to all my viewers for my, my Newsmax TV show. And I did a little bit of math. If you do all, if you add up all the killed in action, since the end of World War II. So that means Korea, Vietnam, Panama, Iraq one, Iraq two, right? If, 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 if you add all of that up with our deaths in Afghanistan, we have had in 70 years, 103,000 men and women in uniform killed in action, okay? 103,000. How many people have died in just one year under the Biden regime? Uh, for, you can find from from from, from fentanyl. You uh, can find I think stats. in one year, Sebastian. I'm I'm gonna guess a hundred uh, in the in the three years or just one year. One year. One hundred and twenty thousand. Hundred and ten. You can find the stat on Biden's CDC website. It's buried, <laughs> but you can find it. So let's just stop for a second. Seventy-five years. Seventy-five years of combat deaths of Marines, of soldiers, of airmen, of Coast Guards, is 103,000 in 70 years. In one year of Biden's open border policies, more Americans died, 110,000. Now, what is this all about? You nailed it. Liberals, and this isn't meant to be funny, it's, it's, it's a fact, it's demography. Liberals don't have babies, right? If you compare them to conservatives, they're well beneath the 2.1 replacement rate per couple. As a result, they think, oh, my gosh, how are we going to maintain power? Well, how do you maintain power? You ship in new voters. They've admitted as much. I mean, you know, you had Jerry Nadler say, well, yeah, of course we should let illegals vote. And what happens? This is the cynicism. This is the racism. Don't forget, right, the KKK was a Democrat institution. Don't forget the man who emancipated the slaves, Abraham Lincoln, was the first ever Republican president. The Democrats have always been bigots. They believe that if we ship in 20, 30 million illegals and then we amnesty them and we give them citizenship because their skin is brown, they're going to vote Democrat. It's the opposite of MLK. They are such stinking racists that they think, hey, if you're brown, if, if you're from Ecuador, if you're from uh, Honduras, you're going to be a Democrat. That's what this is all about. Wow. Anybody, anybody have a question for Sebastian? Oh, yeah, I do. I want to hear first from the guy who said, 
He's too intimidated to ask a question from me. Which guy was that? that? Was oh, great. Great. Sebastian, is, he's perfect. He's right in line. But um, hi, Sebastian. It's Humberto here. Um, I'm actually from South America. Good. Just to put it out there. Um, Thank you kindly. Thank I you. Wanna, I want to talk terrorism. Like, uh, there's very peop uh, little people that know as much as Sebastian about terrorism. Uh, on your 2016 book, I think, uh, Defeating Jihad, Jihad. The, the winnable, winnable War, do you think we can still win that war? Great question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If we understand the nature of the threat, let me just give you one example. I mean, that's the book, Defeating Jihad, that basically got me my job in the, in the Trump White House. When we came in, remember what Obama had told us about ISIS, which was the largest insurgency the world had ever seen, controlling territory in the Middle East, in Nigeria. Obama, again, don't take my word for it, looking up. Obama said, uh, ISIS, it's a generational threat. We're just going to have to learn to live with it. Well, when we came in, the president said, uh, no, we're not going to live with an organization that's beheading American journalists you know, on YouTube. And he got the lawyers out of the way, out of Bragg, out of JSOC, out of you know, the way of Delta Force. He deployed the best fighting force in the world. And something which Obama had said, you just have to deal with it. It's a permanent thing. We destroyed the caliphate of ISIS in five years. Yes, so, yes. sorry, in five months, okay? We were told it was impossible. We did it. So it is possible if we actually have the will to win. The only serious question is, and I don't want to paint the devil on the wall, if, if you're the bad guys, if you're ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, Hamas, if you're the North Koreans, what do, you, what do you think they've done in the last three years when Biden has opened the border? Hmm. What do you think they've done? If, if only 1% of the 8 million illegals that we know of are terrorists, that is divisional-sized assets. So the threat is huge. We've got to seal the border. We've got to get President Trump back. We've got to get the lawyers out of the way. We've got to deport all the illegals. And then we've got to get ready to take the fight, uh, you know, take the war seriously. It can be done, but only with real leadership. Do you think that's a, so, so I was going to ask you that, Sebastian, earlier. So, like I said, with the damage being done, let's say Trump, God willing, comes in. How does that process start? To Because, I mean, that I think the numbers, Sebastian, they're underplaying it. I think in this four yeah. years, once Biden is done, the actual number will be anywhere from 20 to 22 million. If, it, if we're going to be honest with each other and no, no BTSing with the numbers, how does a president come in? I mean, obviously, the chips are stacked against them. How do you start a process to literally getting rid of let's say, even half of what uh, Biden and Mayork has let in. Well, you're absolutely right. I, I had the, the genius behind the president's immigration policies on, on my radio show for an hour. And one of the first questions I asked Stephen Miller was, hey, Stephen, we, we've heard this figure for about 40 years now that there's 12 million illegals in America. Well, that's impossible because the figure can't be static. And, that, and then we know that Biden has let in at least 8 million, but that's the ones we know of. It doesn't include the gotaways. So how many illegals are in America? I asked him flat out, and he said live on radio, Seb, I've done the math, it's about 40 million. Holy 40 million crap. illegals. Yeah. Oh, my. And, and, he, and he's the guy who knows. So how do we get rid of them? Well, look, my, my buddy, my wife's former colleague, my wife was the press secretary for, for Customs and Border uh, Protection, the former commissioner, Mark Morgan, when, when, when I ask him, he, I always say, Mark, you were the commissioner. You worked for President Trump. How, how are we going to deport all of these people? And he says, <laughs> he says, one by one. <laughs> um, and, and, then, and then yesterday, I had the vice president of the Heritage Foundation and the director of their immigration center. I asked her the same question. I said, that's a lot of people, right? So, I, you know, tens of millions. How do you do it? And she had a fascinating answer. She said, most of them will self-deport. If we get serious about clamping down on um, illegal workers, if we stop the Chamber of Commerce, who are all rhinos, saying, we don't need e-verify, we don't need to confirm if somebody's a citizen to have a job in America, if we make it impossible for them to make money legally, these people who want to be here to make money and send it back to their families, they will self-deport. So if you add the combination of deporting the worst of the worst, making it impossible for them to undermine American workers, 
then I think we have a plan. And look, let's get Stephen Miller back in the White House as well. I agree. Go ahead, Umberto has uh, one more. Mr. Gorka, um, I have a question on the other side of the spectrum. Um, yep. You know, I'm, I'm a legal immigrant here. And, uh, Me too. <laughs> See? So are my parents and grandparents, so we have a lot in common. And, and people like me that have university degrees, further studies, like a career, you know, we're clamped at 80,000 every year. Like, like the most high value people that can come into yeah. this country is capped at 80,000. Mm -hmm. We might have to get rid of people that, you know, they come here to, you know, use the welfare system and, you know, crime and whatever. But do you think we need to expand? Are we losing? Are we losing on talent? Are we losing on valuable people for America? Should we change that as well? Well, look, uh, you know, I am a legal immigrant to the United States, and and this is the only nation on God's green earth where somebody like me, who was only naturalized in 2015, in in 2017, I'm walking around the West Wing of of the White House as a deputy to the president. So yeah, I, I'm in favor of legal immigration based upon you know what you bring to the country but but there's a broader point here that, that you highlight which is really crucial the democrats say they're for the little guy they're for the worker and they're for minorities who gets hurt the most by having an open border it's not going to be you it's not going to be vincent it's not going to be me right my my job as a national radio host is not going to be threatened by somebody who's you know bussing tables in austin Who do you hurt the most? You hurt the legal immigrant who just came in, did it all by the book, and is in a minimum wage job who's starting up the ladder of success in America. So who are you screwing with the most? You're actually hurting minorities. I mean, this, this is the dirty secret of what uh, you know, the Biden's open border regime does. It's not going to hurt you and me. It's going to hurt the person who scrimped and saved took the exam, was naturalized, has his own little plumbing company or whatever, and along comes Jose and says, hey, I'll do that job for 50% off in cash. That's how much the Democrats don't really care because those are the people they're hurting the most. Um, oh, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's you, but guess what? They don't know that. You know what, I mean? what that, it is. Yeah, got to keep that a secret. I but uh, They're evil. They know of that. Of course they are. And they act Of course they are. I have, a, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Shane. Um, yeah. Uh, go, hi, Dr. Gorka. I'm, uh, my name is Shane. I'm a writer for V2.com. Um, with your familiarity with Hungarian politics, uh, what can you say about Soros and his influence on American politics? And uh, what could we do to clamp down on his influence Uh, seeing as how Viktor Orban was able to uh, negate his his powers in in his home country uh, quite effectively, what do you what steps do you think we could take to uh, address globalist billionaire influence in America? Great question. Uh, to take so I don't know if you remember in the 1990s uh, the then Democrat leader Tip O'Neill popularized the phrase "All politics is local." And, and we conservatives said, oh, that's kind of cute. And, and we didn't take it seriously. The Democrats meant it. Don't get me wrong. It's cool to work in the White House. It's cool to be a senator or the president. But it really doesn't matter. Our founding fathers understood, and so did the man who wrote the best book on America, of course, a foreigner, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, the book on democracy. What did they say is the most important thing about America? Where does America really live? America lives in the local communities. It lives in the county commissioner's office. It lives at the local school board. And the left understood that. And what did they do for the last 40 years, following on from Saul Alinsky? They said, federal government, yeah, okay, so what? We need to steal America at the local level. Why is George Soros, think about it, why is George Soros funding local prosecutors like Fannie Willis or, or, the, or the local DA here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. What, what the hell has that got to do with anything? Because that's where the real power is. I mean, just think about where, where you really have impact on people's lives, and it's at the local level. When, when I moved to America, I moved to the second richest county in, in the nation, Fairfax County, and the local school board had nine members. Every single one of them was a crazy pro-transgender lunatic leftist. Oh, God. But none of them, none of them had a child in the Fairfax County public school system. Mm. So what the hell were they doing there? 
they were making sure they could control the indoctrination of the children of conservatives. So, you know, when it comes to George Soros, do what my wife did. Let, let me talk about my wife for a second. My wife hates politics because she's sane. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, all of us on this show, we're freaks, right? We mm -hmm. love politics. That's, that's who we are. Three years ago, my wife comes to me and says, I'm running for the board of the local community center. And I go, <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? You hate politics. And, and anyway, you're, you're asking me my advice, right? I mean, you've, you've read St. Paul's letter, you know, about how women should defer to their husbands. And you're, you're asking <laughs> my permission, right? And she says, oh, oh, oh no, uh, I've already got all the signatures and I'm running. And I'm going, what? what? Why are you running for a political position in our community? Well, because last month, the community center that has an $8 million budget taken out of our property taxes, a little community center for kids, had a drag queen story hour. Oh, God. And she said, that, I'm sorry, that's not happening on my watch, on my dime. She lost the election with a lot of mail-in ballots. Isn't Weird. that interesting? Weird. And then I thought, oh, okay, she's got it out of her system. What did she do? No. She ran the next year with two other conservative women. All three of them are now on the board. Then she became a chief election officer in our district. That's why she worked a 16-hour day yesterday for the primaries. And now she's running for the county chair in Fairfax for the Republican Party. So my answer to you is, if you're fed up with the left controlling everything in America, don't ask me. Look in the mirror. What are you doing about it? If Katie Gorka can step up to the plate, it's up to us to take back our nation every school board election at a time, every county uh, you know, commissioner election at a time. Remember what Benjamin Franklin said to that little old lady after he, he came out of that meeting with the founding fathers. And she said, what, what is it that we've created, Mr. Franklin? And he said, a republic, madam, for as long as you can keep it. Wow. Don't look, to, don't look to somebody else for the answer. Donald Trump, we need him back, but he's just one man. It is our country. We need to take it back. I, I, I love, love that. that take because when people, some people get lost, Sebastian, they're like, well, I can't do nothing. They lose hope. They lose vision. And you nailed it. It's starting locally, your neighborhood. Get involved. Stop talking about it and be about it. And I commend your wife. Uh, moving on. Uh, one last thing, uh, Sebastian, before we, uh, we let you go. The Supreme Court uh, ruling that came down, was it yesterday? The day before. The day before, before. yesterday. 9-0 um, uh, victory, landslide. Even the Democratic uh, Supreme Court justices, they had to do it. Well, who were who are the three? Uh, Salamayor, Kagan, 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 and... and uh, uh, Ketanji Brown. Ketanji yeah. like, Brown. And listen, it's like... That doesn't you, know who that woman is. Truth, yeah. I mean, yeah. law, I, I'm shocked. But the law, you know, you have to go by the book. And the book says what they're doing is ridiculous. And I mean, just, you know, your former boss, uh, Trump, just, just a quick list of what they've tried. From Obama CIA trying to spy on him, which is a fact. Hillary and the DNC doing the fake Russian collusion that ruined this country, that people are still talking about him being a, a Russian asset, which is completely ludicrous. Impeachment twice, indicted him four times, arrested him four times, 91 criminal charges, none of it worked, uh, Sebastian. The states are trying to disqualify him, that failed. So my question now is, Sebastian, the establishment is running out of options, okay? Yeah. They're either can't let the vote happen, which I, want, I was going to ask you earlier, is, are they all these people that are coming in the border, could they be you know, set up for cyber attacks or terrorists, which I think it's not done by accident. I think it's all done by design. But what they, they have to try to take them out. Uh, Sebastian, I think if it comes down to it and they can't win with the mail-in ballots, they can't win by putting in a Michelle or, you know, Mickey Haley sneaks in as a Democrat and Gavin Newsom, that snake comes in. Who knows? Sebastian, is there any real concern for them actually trying to do something to take Donald Trump out? Like, is that something that's like on the table for these evil people? Well, look, let's look at history. I don't, I don't want to tempt fate, but uh, remember what happened to Brett Kavanaugh, a lunatic. You, you have, think of this. Nobody's made the connection. You have the leader of the Democrats in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, outside the Supreme Court, threaten the conservative justices and say, if you make the wrong decision on Roe v. Wade, Gorsuch 
Kavanaugh, you will reap the whirlwind. What, is, what does that mean? Is, is that the leader of the Democrats in the upper house threatening violence to conservative members of the Supreme Court? What happens right after that? A guy, nobody knows his name because, of course, it's suppressed by the media. A Californian loony Democrat called Nicholas Ruska travels the country all the way to Virginia to Kavanaugh's house with an illegal Glock, with a bayonet and zip ties. With what purpose? To murder Justice Kavanaugh and his children and his wife. Okay. If it wasn't for a last minute Hail Mary and he said, oh, no, I, I, I shouldn't do this, that justice would be dead. Likewise, if you look at, look, Dan Bongino is a friend of mine. He's a straight shooter. He's a massive patriot. He's not just, a, you know, the guy who inherited Rush Limbaugh's slot. He's a former NYPD cop and a former Secret Service agent who protected President Obama. When Dan Bongino, more than once on his daily show, says, I am concerned for the physical safety of President Trump, you got to start listening. Mm -hmm. when, when you have Alan Dershowitz, he's no MAGA voter, right? This mm -hmm. is a dyed in the wool Democrat. When he comes on my radio show and says he is worried about the Democrats doing something worse than putting President Trump in prison, we have to pay attention. When, when you want power so much, you will justify anything then we have to take these potential threats seriously. So, you know, God bless the Secret Service team that's protecting Mar-a-Lago and the president. God bless the private security he has. But to all of the viewers and listeners right now, please keep President Trump, Melania, Barron, Eric, Don Jr., keep them all in your prayers. And uh, let's do everything we can to get 45 to be 47, because really, you don't want to even consider the other scenario. Uh, Sebastian, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, I want to say thank you, Sebastian, from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you more than you know. I think this country is it, one, one huge, hugely, bigly for having you come here as a legal immigrant and the, your voice, your, your movement, what you're changing the minds of the American people. I absolutely love it. I think you're a necessary voice. And uh, who knows, when, if, if and when 47 comes in, Maybe he uh, hires you again, and maybe you can invite me, and I could hang out at the White House with, with you. I'm just throwing that out there, Sebastian. I'm just that's, saying. <laughs> hey, that, that's an easy do. That's an easy do. Yeah, get, get, getting, uh, getting good guys and gals in the White House, but let's get him reelected first. Thank you for this amazing opportunity. Uh, check out my website. Check out my Substack, sebgorka.com, sebastiangorka.substack.com, uh, and keep doing what you do. And we need more of those videos. We need more of those superb skit videos, guys. Yes. And say hi to Patrick. <laughs> I will. God bless you, Sebastian. You so Take much. care. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. God bless. All right, guys. For, uh, for our first story, Doritos double down on wokeness and partner with Samantha Hudson, a non-binary transgender girl to be their brand ambassador in Spain. I mean, Doritos, as, yeah. as if they didn't get the message with Bud Light. They were like, no, 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 we're gonna try it too, all right? So the new partnership with Doritos was announced through a 50 second video, we're not gonna play the whole thing because a lot of us don't speak Spanish, called Crunch Talks. Kelly, if you may, can you play the clip and show this uh, person? No soy nada de eso. O sea, oh, eres falta. Perfecta. No, no soy eres perfecta. perfecta. Estoy súper orgullosa de mí. Es de ser totalmente quien yo soy y no oprimirme por nada del mundo. ¿Te pasa mucho que te toman por el pito del sereno? Siempre. <risa> he estado en clases, he estado en charlas y a mis profesores directamente ni me han escuchado. Me han dicho directamente que no me metan física porque es una carrera muy difícil y hay muchos tíos. ¿Te has enfrentado como a más descalificaciones en las redes sociales que en tu día a día? Sí. Es que la, yo creo claro. que la gente es persona. That makes me want to buy Doritos, first and foremost. Like, right now, Dorito hungry. I don't know what was up with her hair. Orange probably has Cheeto if, dust. If, if crusty Dorito cheese fingers were a person, it would be... That would be, it, would be, that would be it, bro. That, that... By the way, and you guys, did you even read about this? Do you know about this story? Do you know about this story? This makes me angry in, in <laughs> three levels. Okay, okay, okay. Like, this, this person makes Dylan Mulvaney look like a Girl Scout, okay? So... Hudson, who is a proud Marxist, has openly mocked victims of child rape, has admitted to being a pedophile, and is an advocate for annihilating, completely destroying, and abolishing the traditional family. Kelly, can you please play that clip for me, please? Go ahead. 
Yo abogo por eh, aniquilar y destruir por completamente, abolir la familia tradicional nuclear monógama. No es que vaya a darle una paliza a mis padres, ni mucho menos, Ajá. pero creo que ya está bien de tener eh, un canon estandarizado. Like, okay, by the way, what an, uh, I'm for everybody living their truth and doing what they want to do. What an ugly person. Like, just in general, by the way, just literally openly mocks child rape. Admitted to being a pedophile, a dude, like, in just two days, two days after this, uh, Doritos fired this human being claiming they were unaware that Hudson uh, sexually, was talking about, se like, sexually assaulting kids. And by the way, apparently nobody on Doritos' marketing team did any research about this demon. Yeah. God, can we throw those tweets up? Oh, yeah, you, do you want to see them? Yeah. And by the way, so, yeah, because Doritos is no longer working with Hudson after tweets surfaced of the transgender saying some disgusting shit. Kelly, can you put, yeah, put these up? I'm gonna read them, guys. This is translated from Spanish to English, but you guys will get the gist. Um, I want to do hooligan things, like putting a 12-year-old girl in the, you know what? I hate women who are victims of rape, who turn them, uh, who turn to self-help centers to overcome their trauma. What heavy whores, and this one's the kicker, I don't even know what the hell, this person's talking about, which is a demon. Look at the photo on the top, if you need any more proof. I just passed my little cousin's tongue through the blank, and she smiled at me. The little ones, too. They deserve pleasure. Okay, let me... And, and yeah. bear in mind, those are tweets. Those are not, like, archived Reddit posts or some obscure social media platform. No. Very publicly out there. Very public, it, Connor. It, it, just, it just really goes to show with these transgender influencers. If you look into their background even a little bit, it's right there to see. Yeah. Why is it that almost every time you do this with one of these people, it's it's pro pedophilia, pro uh, sexual violence against women? Abolish the family. Abolish type the stuff. family. Like they, they are unhinged and very public about it. So don't Doritos can't pretend like oh we didn't know. No, they're, they're pretending. You know why they're doing it? Because they got media? caught. Let me explain exactly. something to you. There's a different tune that gets played when you get caught, and it's like, hey, we had no idea. Let me explain something to you. You don't ha Doritos, Pepsi Co. I think is under Pepsi. Yeah. You don't make a decision like that, Alicia. You don't pull the, the you don't pull the cord. I'm like, okay, we're going with this person, dude. I was in Hollywood. For me to get on a certain show, they hit me up and they're like, you better delete. Go to your Facebook and delete this, this, and this. This is me. I was nobody. If they're doing that research on me, you're representing Dori Bro, Doritos. Bro, Doritos is a household name. <laughs> yeah. Like, even if Doritos right now was like, guys, we put poison in this shit. I'm still eating it. Yeah. We have Doritos in here, which I'm throwing them all away now because yeah. I'm anti that. But what do you think, Alicia? When you see something like that, that type of person, that image, what, it, what do you think about it? And what is what are Doritos trying to say? I don't know what message Doritos is trying to send or why they think that will want us to buy or eat Doritos. <laughs> yeah. I I don't get it. And I don't know why they didn't do any market research or any background check on this person. Like, why they're going to put them out. Yeah, like just that. look yeah. at them. Did you see the close up? Like, it was the scary. Teeth, the face. It was that is a scary individual. And nothing about that make, makes me go, you know what? <laughs> I, I really want to buy get Doritos. I was going to get some Funyuns, but that person changed my mind. Yeah. Rebecca, you look like you're going to have a heart attack. Because you, okay. out of all people, could understand I, what he was I, saying I know. in the video. Yeah, oh, go ahead. This made me, angry. <laughs> this made me angry in three levels. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> First, surface level anger. Yeah. I, I used to be in the advertising industry. I'm glad I left. I'm glad I left. I'm glad I left, yeah. because this is lazy. No research on the guy that they're about to sponsor. Then if you actually hear what they're saying, it's the same bullshit. It's like, oh, I'm so oppressed. Like, I'm gonna study physics, but whatever. You know, like yeah. nobody cares about the conversation. That's the first level of anger. Yeah. It's lazy, low research, and having a pedophile, you yeah. know, <laughs> on a commercial. That's not, that's not acceptable. That's your ambassador. Second level of anger, Spanish women. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get canceled again. Yeah. I picked up with, with Norwegian last time, yeah. and now a Spanish woman. Yeah. They're uglier than the rest of women in, in Europe. I'm sorry <laughs> to say this. So she's molded her woman image yeah. towards Spanish women. It's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster. So, so you're saying, wait, so you're saying Spanish women aren't hot? 
No, not at all. <laughs> really? Not at all. So out of all the Latin world, what's because Brazilian women, I'm, I'm Dude, listen, you know, amazing body. I disagree. Listen, amazing bodies, big yeah, butts, yeah, but yeah. their faces. No, no. But you go to Argentina, <laughs> they're all beautiful. They're all okay. Beautiful. Well, I mean, that's, you go to Colombia, we perfect the form. Colombia is beautiful, but yeah. hold on a second. But you, all right, quite, well, this is a. I, we have to get serious. <laughs> you think? Brazilian women are more beautiful in the face than Spanish women? No, it's not it's not that they're ugly like genetically. Yeah. The way they the Spanish women in general carry themselves is I don't know, it's very off putting. Like they're very like their mannerism is very manly and oh. I don't know, I don't like <laughs> so who's, who's, I don't like the way they dress, I don't like the way they talk, I don't like Spanish so women. So who's the so who's the who's the not to take because I want you to stay on the topic. Who's um <laughs> the girl that was in a blow, the wife? Yes. What's her name? But she she's been Americanized. Um, she's yep. Yeah, oh, but, but she's kind of annoying. Yeah. I can see what you're talking she's about. Kind of What's her name? The Spanish girl, Kelly. You ever watch that movie? Um, Vanilla Sky. She was in it. Penelope uh, Cruz. Uh, Penelope <laughs> Cruz. Yeah, she's been cleansed for the American public. Um, taste. She's been cleansed. <laughs> but but if you go to Spain and you see women in general, they, I mean they're terrible. What okay? the hell? I've never I've never heard that. I'm going to take you to Spain and you see what. Dude, I'm that's it. I want everybody out there to know. We're, I'm going to Spain with him and I'm recording everything. Uh, Spanish women are gorgeous. I'm now being dead serious. This All right, one third, level. third level. Third level. <laughs> She's third like, come level. on. Third level. It's the historical embarrassment. Yeah. Like we Spaniards, we conquered the freaking world. Yeah. We had an armada, we discovered America, we did the Crusades, yeah. we did the Reconquista. Yeah. Like we were like the most hardcore like warmongers in the planet. Yeah. We, we we did everything. Yeah. America is yeah. America because yeah. we discovered it. Of course, okay? Christopher Columbus. And Italian. Uh -huh. And actually an Italian, well, but yeah. Well, we paid you guys, for it. You guys we did the dirty work. Yeah. 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 This guy here. Yeah. <laughs> this, whose Number money one. was it? Whose money was it? Well, if you ask, but hold on, but if you ask uh, Google AI, it was a black guy. So no, and, fair right. let's just be real. And I don't know if this, this is bannable on YouTube, but... <laughs> bannable? I, I didn't even say what I wanted to say <laughs> about that the, demon. The, the level of unmanly behavior that Spain is showing the world. There was a news last week, did you guys see it, about uh, the guy that was doing a world tour on a motorbike? Mm. No, what happened? Well, this guy was doing a world tour. I hate travelers as well. Like, oh my God, <laughs> let's travel, world travel. <laughs> let's sleep on a tent yeah. and poop on the floor. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, they went to like 68 countries. They go to India. Yeah. That is all good. I'm gonna oh, wait, is it like, I'll yeah. tell us, yeah. is it? Yeah. But he, he was a, uh, his wife got gang raped by seven yes. oh Indian guys. I saw with that. Bass. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm sorry, my Indian audience, but it's the most rapey place in the world. And is there, there are they rapers? Uh, no, uh, it's rapey. Aggressively. Aggressively. Well, they have the most people on the planet are from also, India because they're horny. That's also where the uh, the rape crisis all over Europe came from. All the Indian and Pakistani immigrants have moved all over Europe. Guys, oh, right. yeah. and so, now like, there, there are now roving gang rapes happening all over England, Germany, basically every country that has allowed them in. But, and it, but, but it's, it's not a knock against Is it the Indian Doritos? People. I mean, what's I don't the... Know. <laughs> Umberto, as a marketing genius, what would you have done for this commercial instead? This commercial? Mm -hmm. Women, bikinis, okay. Doritos. That's it. The, the yeah. American it. Super Bowl commercials that's, for Doritos. That's, that's what, it. That's what it needs to be. Make it sexy, make it funny. That's what it is. There, there's like a Doritos. cartoon on the internet where it's like guys in a boardroom, they're saying, all right, what should our next campaign be? And it's like all this crazy woke stuff. And they're like, well, what about something about burgers? And they're like, Burgers. Yeah, how would this the sell burgers? It's like wow. chips. So what is that noise, guys? Something. It's no, and nobody's even moving. Okay, but the kicker on that story is that the guy. What? No, just the microphone keeps going and it's driving me nuts. Because okay, the guy, he went online. Yeah. To like apologize for the gang rapers. <laughs> He did a video, he was like, oh, you shouldn't look down on India, these things that happen when you're world traveling. That was his yeah. husband? That was yeah. the husband? With the, wife, husband? with the wife in the video. With the wife in the up. video, what are oh. you doing? So, she right had... now, huh? Yeah. Okay, Spain is done. That's it. That's... <laughs> it's done. Like, let's close the doors, close it up, it's done. Okay, okay, so, here, so here, and here's my question, because Connor, we were talking about this yesterday. What is it with these, with the transgenders and all this, like, with their obsession with, the younger kids, because it's not like we're making this up. The proof is in the pudding, and it's on Twitter. It's and I hate when people are like, "Well, I was, you know, like like with Hunter Biden, I was drunk, I was high." No, 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 no. You said it. It's out there. It's documented for the rest of your life. What is it? What is? And somebody the other day told me transgenderism leads to pedophilia. It's there's there's some 
relationship in there where the sexualization of these young kids, making them kids, I, I think I've seen those videos, those drag queen dancing hours where they're dancing in front of the kids, mm -hmm. the parents are bringing them up to watch. I can they're, explain it. Please, please do them count on, I wanna go to all, well, all three of you. Yeah, uh, Shane, did go. you wanna take that? Yeah, I just wanna cover the basics. So if you want to change the world, right? Mm -hmm. You have to change the future. The children are the future. Yeah. If you believe that the world needs to be changed in human nature itself, if you think human nature is somehow inherently corrupt, or at least within the capitalist system, then you need to change the root of what you think is the capitalist system. For late Marxists, they believe it is the family unit. They think the family unit inscribes capitalism upon children by teaching men to be men and go out and make money. Guess what? Making money means perpetuating capitalism. Mm -hmm. And to be a stay-at-home wife is to replicate this model indefinitely. So if you go to the children and you get them to abolish heterosexuality and gender itself, then you could potentially end the capitalist system within one generation. So attacking the children, attacking the family unit is the quickest way, they now think, to upending capitalism. It's no longer seizing the factories, it's now abolishing the family. And th there's also the other thing, uh, I believe Dr. Gorka just brought it up, uh, they don't reproduce. When you opt to be transgender, when you opt for a homosexual relationship, you are essentially removing yourself from the gene pool. Like you're not able to have kids in a traditional sense. So the most straightforward way to reproduce then is to go take someone else's kids. And it also goes even deeper in that, say you're you know, a late stage trans activist, you have every surgery under the sun, you, you've permanently mutilated your body in a hideous and frankly demonic way and you, you reach the end of that road and you realize it wasn't what you wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. you, you are, you're now stuck with this. The only way to justify your decision is to say, oh look, there's thousands more kids just like me coming up. I'm not alone in this. There's a whole other generation. I'm the cutting edge of a movement. So then you convert them all to your movement and get another generation to be just like you. Hmm. Good point. And what they're saying, like it sounds crazy, but there's documentation of this. There's like books on top of books on top of books. Matter of fact, in 1977, all these degenerate French, um, how do you call it, philosophers, signed a letter to get rid of age of consent. You know about this. Oh, yeah. Simone de Beauvoir, Michel uh, Foucault. Sartre, uh, Deleuze, Guattari, Guattari. Alcacer, So Lacan. they all got together, all these degenerates that, that started this ideology. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's got, just the French for you. Yeah, well, that's yeah. just the French, but I mean, this goes back to like Roman and Greek and mm -hmm. all this but, yeah, but young what's boys. What's different is that back then, they were just doing it aimlessly. Now it's with a political intention. Oh, got you. Can you believe how insane they did a public letter with their signature? Like we want to get rid of ages of consent so everybody can hook up with whatever age we want. Yes. Which leads to today them changing and don't and people try to act like we're crazy. Map. I said this the other day to somebody and they're like, "What are you even talking about?" I go, "They changed. They're trying to change the word pedophile to minor attractive persons." Guys, there's a big problem that I have with the left trying to change the language to make it more acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Minor attractive person. What's some other ones that I, I, I wrote them down that well, they're trying to do? Well, you, you even think about it because... Birthing person. Yeah. Birthing person. Like, pedophile oh is a scaled down version of it because you're like pedo, child, philo, love. Yeah. Like it's just someone who loves children. Yeah. The, the term they used to be were pederasts. Yeah, which is pederasts. like an actual different thing that yeah. you know more accurately represents what it is. But they, they changed it, and pedophile was supposed to be the compromise. The reason they want to change the language, by the way, is so that they get civil rights recognition. Because mm -hmm. currently, pedophile is seen as a, a mental disorder. But if they could change it to a, an identity, a subset of the population, that means they deserve civil rights under the Civil Rights Act. So if they can change the name into a subgroup that has a legitimate identity, then they can be given rights uh, and potentially freed from crimes as it's their way of life. So Shakespeare was wrong. The name of the rose matters. It does. It does right. matter. It it's does. A, a, and in regard to the pederasses, the pedophiles, all these people, I think, I think we're we're not addressing this thing. Everybody always wants them to go to jail, and I, I'm actually happy that in jail the criminals yeah. actually have. Think about this: murderers in jail, guys that have burned, killed, done the R word. I don't want to say the, the despicable things. If they find out that you've done something to a child, they collectively put a hit out on you to end your life because they know that that's pure evil. So I think about they, it. It's, what, what's no, it, what's they it? literally keep the pedophiles in a separate area from 
the right from general population. Yeah, because they will die. Good. Well, guess is, what? Yeah. Uh, which I think. Listen. I know. And again, the innocence. They say they, they. It's all over the Bible about the innocence of children. I think God said, if you hurt one hair of a child, it's better for you to fall no. or burn well, or drown. Yeah, the, the be drowned at the bottom of the sea with well, the weight. Well, actually, what it what it says is, if you you know cause a child to stumble, lead them into scandal, harm them. It's better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone around your neck, which is why I actually support calling them maps. Why? Millstone attached person. Oh, snap! Oh, nice. I, like, well, see, I think it should be completely different. I think that there should be a law, and I'm being dead serious when it comes to them. If you are a pedophile and you're convicted, you, get, you go to court, we do the whole process, and you get found guilty, we surgically remove yeah. your penis. Hold on. You get rid of anything that's going to make you do anything harm. And if you think about it, that way we can knock out two birds with one stone. The pedophile isn't a, th a threat to society more. And we donate your penis to those girls that want to have gender affirming thing. <laughs> and then, hey, win-win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pedophile's not a threat. Yeah. And, and you, and you know, you want to be a man? The T's get D's. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. So, you're, you're at the top of the donor list now. Congratulations. So, yeah, so I think, you know, they're getting a backlash. I think, you know, there should be a boycott. If you have Doritos in your house, I would call to have them thrown away. Anyway, next story. Umberto, I know I mentioned at the beginning, but all I heard was whales and gay. And I want to know what you're talking about. Please let us know what you, like, what's well, happening. A little bit more cheerful. Yeah. Equally as gay of a story. Okay. <laughs> we, we have. The whales this, were at least uh, cisgender. The whale <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Well, look, this, this turns really sad really quick because like, when I did the research last night, uh, New York Post article, humpback whales caught enjoying gay sex romp in the first documented photos of whale humping. Who, who reported this? Uh, the New York Post. How do they know oh. they're enjoying it? <laughs> Wait. Okay. Wait I'm waiting. Wait, Wait a on. Minute. I'm being patient. Okay, so scientists out in the sea. I never seen a scientist. They they know too many things. They're, like, they're so nosy. Yeah, they're so Big nosy. So nosy. Like, Why I, do you have a camera I, in the bottom of the sea? Look, Come on. I, yeah, what are you we doing down there? Already. I'm, I'm okay. out here looking for whale something. Yeah, yeah. Please, so right. I, I look we need, we, we need to everything. ban all scientists until we figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, uh, what the <laughs> yeah I think scientists are a conspiracy and never seen one. Never seen we one. Yeah, the lab cold. Where are these yeah. guys? I love going on boat rides in Miami. Never seen a scientist out there. Ever. Ever. Like a lab coat with like his hand yeah. in the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so this story turns real sad real quick. What? Where did you what? find this? So, so, so it's not already to, sad. I want to defend Umberto on this one because in our in our unusual suspects group chat last night, when he sends this uh, this topic, everyone's like, "Oh, what were you googling to find this?" He didn't have to Google anything. This was front page news on like four different news sites. Well, get away from Th it. This was like ABC, yeah. New York Post, uh, NBC, because, and I, this is what I was, I was discussing with Shane earlier, and it goes into the point I made in the Doritos story. These people are desperate to find examples in nature of their weird sexual hangups that they invented 20 minutes ago yeah. being like a natural phenomenon that everything experiences. That's why you, you've heard the stories for years about, oh, these two penguins, they're both males, but they, they've adopted rocks that they think are eggs and are in a sexual relationship. Here's a video of two whales humping out in the ocean. That, that, that means homosexuality happens in nature. And where it's not an aberrant behavior, it's a thing that everybody does. Look, birds do it, bees do it, educated fleas do it, let's all be gay together. Yeah, frogs are gay yeah. too. Well, every animal that can get a liberal arts degree will do it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> now, in an unfortunate turn of events, oh, the story God. turns really sad really oh, quick. Oh, no. They weren't actually enjoying gay sex because mm -hmm. uh, one of the whales was sick. What? And uh, yeah, one of the whales was really sick. It had mobility issues. And the other whale took advantage of that situation. Was it an Indian whale? Don't. <laughs> don't. So, uh, so it, wasn't, it wasn't enjoying sex. It was uh, unwanted sex. It was mm. uh, so That's... unwanted because the other one took advantage because it was kind of immobile. Yes. That's not nice. How do they nah. determine? How does he know? Yeah, I mean, how do you know that you're what? injured as a whale? You're hey, just in the hey, water. Am I wearing a white lab coat? No, I'm no. not a scientist. Yeah. I'm just Trust reporting what I see. All right. Yeah, All right. So, but, but this story right here is not about gay whales. It's about redeeming our savior. Alex Jones. Okay. He didn't go far enough with the gay frogs. Okay. Now we have gay whales. Mm -hmm. And he's not the only one taking notice of this. This is the second story. This is a kicker. RuPaul building 45 compound to withstand cycle of destruction. So 
the gay whales, I, I don't know if this is related, but oh, right now it is. <laughs> so even RuPaul is worried <laughs> okay. about all the gay sex going on. <laughs> and he's building himself. Is a doomsday <laughs> bunker. He's, he's building a doomsday bunker. What does yes. RuPaul know? RuPaul, yeah, him and Zuckerberg know yeah. something. Something's 20, up. 2024, everyone. Year of chaos. Yes. Year of yes. chaos. But Serious chaos. building off of what Humberto was saying. Yeah. 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 Going on what Humberto was saying, like, <laughs> Alex Jones gets crap for the they're turning the frogs gay, but that was actually happening. Yeah, like they found, they found chemical runoff in the water that was making a whole population of frogs hermaphroditic, causing all sorts of uh, biological problems with them. Similarly, they have found that a high presence of microplastics in your system causes all sorts of hormonal disruptions, has maybe been led to or connected to different weird sexual behavior and infertility and, and infertility uh, lower sperm counts. and uh, whales as m most of them are filter feeders they have been found to have to ingest massive amounts of microplastics that run off into the ocean so this might actually be a phenomenon of whales are ingesting microplastics it's causing hormonal disruption and leading to all sorts of sexual weirdness so, with them. So me dressing up as a unicorn when I have sex, that could be because of the microplastics? Yeah, yeah. blame it on that. If, if that's what helps you sleep at oh, night. Shit. I have a theory, quick one. Uh, I think the whales, since they moved so slow, they were moving in to it, you know, and they realized too late that it was same sex and they were trying to back out of it, but the scientists got there in time and reported it. <laughs> well, See that? Yeah. Maybe he's on to something. I, I, I don't make the news, I just relate points that are clear. Yeah. Like, imagine how dire and weird the situation is that out of all places, RuPaul is building his bunker in Wyoming. Wyoming? Like, yes! What? How crazy is that? Is he gonna become a cowboy too? Yeah! Oh my god. Humpback hump 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 Mountain. mountain. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's on the gay uh, front. Well, dude, oh, wait, it just, going back to the scientists, as if there's not enough crap <laughs> that you can help with society with anything else, the fact that this guy, we're, we're spending money to find out gay whale sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, fix something else, bro. <laughs> Do fix anything the, else. Fix the, the, the microplastic water. Mm -hmm. Figure something out. Because I read something, too, where guys like, why everybody's becoming so feminine. Women flush something down the... Hormonal birth control Hormonal has, ends up in the water supply. Their urine. Uh, you didn't hear about this? No. So you guys, if you're on birth control yeah. and you pee, it goes into this, you know, they try to recycle it, but a lot of the stuff doesn't get filtered. You're making the whales gay. Everybody's oh, becoming soft. Everybody's, like, wearing fanny packs. That's a yeah. big... <laughs> big deal. Big. Have to be good, but mine's for a different cause, oh, you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. But don't, <laughs> don't do it. But um, it's just, we I mean, just society as a whole... Men are becoming softer. There's, you know, have you seen our military? Did you guys see the the, the transgender lieutenant colonel? That's mm -hmm. like, listen, I know we're in five wars. People are dying. But in these emails, you better call me a chi. Don't he him. And it's like, what would you do? We're a lot. We're a lot. Really, I'm so happy. Guys, you have no idea how ecstatic I am that I'm not in during that time because they are laughing at us. Like, because think about it. If we ever get into a ground war, we don't have the missiles. We don't have the manpower because there's no men. Nobody wants to join. It's 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 really, really sad. And I'm happy that I got out. Well, did, I got did you see that uh, yesterday the VA banned use of the photo of the sailor kissing that nurse after VE day. Yeah, you can't use and it. And of course, as soon as that memo got leaked, they're like, no, no, we reversed it. You can yeah. use the photo. We got caught. But yeah. We got caught. This this is a cycle of public humiliation. Uh, there was a, a walk that they did of guys wearing heels. Oh, red, like, red, oh, red high heels. Red high heels. Uh, then you have the, 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 the military doing all those things. And, and RuPaul is being, building a trans shelter. Dude, every, like, you know? if, if you think about it, once yeah. the whales go gay, we're in bad shape. Well, here's what I like, want to know. I'm all, all, the, all the scientists who refuse to affirm that there are only two genders, that there are male and female, yeah. they're saying, like, look, this was an example of gay sex between two male whales. How do you know they're male? Maybe, yeah. maybe the one on the bottom know. identifies as a female whale. Yeah, how you, do you know? Maybe it was singing at a, a female frequency. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Just asking questions. But one thing is yeah. for sure, I'm never going to swim the ocean again. Mm. That's it. The sperm ocean is whale. done. What, was it a yeah. sperm whale? What kind of whale was it? Do you know? Was this it, sperm they, whale? They were humpbacks. It was humpbacks. Which, which is very oh, the Whoever named all the whales, yeah. they're a pervert. We are. Sperm whale, whale, whale humpback. Yeah, whale scientists are unexceptably horny. Get it, yeah, but like, it, it, just to choose of. that field, I don't, I don't respect them. But um, all right, guys. We're going to move on to the next, the next story. It's Shane. Yes. What is going on with Tesla? I don't know if there was an attack. Yeah. Please. 
So talk to us, Shane. All right. So uh, in in Germany, there's a factory for Tesla cars. It's actually the only factory in all of Europe for Tesla. It's called the Gigafactory. It's outside Berlin, and uh, it was attacked yesterday by. Uh, arsonists who destroyed its power supply. It has shut off all the electricity at the plant for at least one week and it's going to cause hundreds of millions of dollars worth of losses and has already stalled 1,000 cars from being produced. Uh, it was uh, claimed to be attacked. The group that did it was an anarchist collective uh, named the Volcano Group oh. and on their website in their long manifesto they said they were doing it to end patriarchy. Now, what is the connection between Tesla cars and patriarchy? Well, according to them, uh, capitalism is, is uh, produced by, uh, by patriarchal intentions to uh, exploit the earth and its resources. So in its place, they want to start eco-feminism and have an <laughs> uprising of people destroying factories so that we can end men. Very interesting. Well, um, I think they objected to the the, the Giga Chad factory they I got there. I think so. I think that's really they're just a bunch off. of strong chin dudes making cars. Well, so it turns out that there's also next to the plant in the woods an entire encampment of tree forts from an anarchist group. Kelly, if you could pull up the pictures for them. <laughs> what um, is well, what what is it? So so living in the woods next to the plant like Ewoks from Star Wars. <laughs> Are all these anarchists hiding in trees? Can we see that? Can we see that, Cal? <laughs> Who uh, they they haven't made a connection directly to the encampment, um, but they believe there's reason uh, because they're holding up Tesla from expanding its factories, and they're uh, here, here's a picture. Water, Water the human right. Oh. They have the Antifa flags, and there's 80 to 100 of them living in the woods. And as Connor and I were talking, there's there's two kinds of. Uh, radicals. There's the city radicals, but then there's the forest radicals, and that's a little bit more dangerous. If, if you run into liberals in the woods, be careful. Like the the, <laughs> the city liberals, you know, are the soft, purple-haired yeah. lunatics who want to scream at you, but they'll put on a mask and only attack you when there's 500 of them against one. Yeah. Woods liberals are the ones who are like putting anthrax in envelopes and blowing things up. This was actually a big problem over here a little while ago. Uh, a couple years back, there was this group of weird liberal collectivists called the Rainbow People who took over huge stretches of the Appalachian Trail. Okay. This didn't get reported much. But it was basically, you know, Appalachian Trail, very popular hiking destination. And, you know, they, they would just kind of live out there. And hikers would come through and go to the, you know, the, 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 uh, the trail campsites they have set up with the shelters for the night. And, you know, they'd have a bonfire and they'd invite people in. And the hikers would go to sleep and they'd wake up and all their stuff would be gone, just distributed amongst the collective. Like, oh, we took all your stuff. We, we now we now own it. Oh, damn. And it was like, well, if you wanted your stuff back, then they'd start to get a little bit more aggressive and violent. And it's like, dude, you took all my food, and I'm a I'm a two days walk from the nearest trailhead. Like, there's no way I'm gonna survive. And then they they basically just chase people down the trail. Jeez. Like, it's either you donate all your stuff to the collective. Or we steal it from you and drive you away with violence. What what is what's the local authorities doing to to, to, to freaking yeah. liberal like what the hell is going so, on? So uh, Kelly, if you could pull up the next picture of the Tesla cars on fire. So um, there the there's a police investigate. Well, there's a guy on a zip line. Oh, one great! Of these, uh, He's just having a great in the trees, man. Yeah, in the trees. Uh, this was the pylon that was uh, destroyed with arson attack. And then in the next picture, oh. this was in uh, October, I believe. Uh, a Tesla plant was lit on, or a collection of cars by Frankfurt was lit on fire. And uh, they believe this was a direct attack from a radical group as well. So the authorities are looking into the matter. Yeah. But the citizens of this town in Ber uh, near Berlin, they voted against Tesla from expanding its factory. So they're, they're preventing Tesla from creating more cars to help Germ Germany's economy. And uh, the, um, the anarchists are occupying this forest so that the Tesla factory can't move and expand. Oh, wow. um, as Peter Thiel said, it's uncool to be rich in Europe. Uh, what the hell is going it's on? It's impossible. It's impossible. So they, they're basically making it completely impossible for us to, for them to um, maintain the civilization that gives all of them running water and electricity. And what's going to happen when many more crazy woods, woodland liberals Light stuff on fire, destroy pipelines, as the New York Times has advocated, blow up a pipeline was literally an article from the New York Times. Uh, what happens to everyone? Like, if you thought the 
uh, supply chain disruptions were bad during the pandemic, imagine how bad it will be when everything's on fire because people think they're doing a good thing. How many people will starve? How many people will die because of that? Oh my God. Walls. Walls, they're the greatest solution. Yeah. Germans know that if you install a big, beautiful wall, yeah. you solve communism. And to solve this, guys, I remember, guys, what, what happened in Chaz? Was it Chaz? Chaz, Chaz in, uh, yes. you, you, you remember that time Wait, when radical, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when radical, radical yeah. protesters took over Portland. six city blocks for about two no, months? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Called, that's not, that, you know, that's, that's no. bullshit that the military didn't go in and, that's, and get... That's called treason. Treason! Weird! And, yeah. and a good word. foreign invasion taking over a city. But... And they can't, they can't uh, replace civilization because, as we saw from their pathetic garden that they attempted to make, all the plants yeah, died immediately. Also, the garden was racially segregated. Don't forget about oh, that. Right. This so is they the black segregation. Garden. This is the white garden over mm -hmm. here. Uh, okay, so we wall them in and wait. That's it. Yeah. We wall them in and wait. They, they can't survive, survive if you yeah, wall like, them in. Like, there was a book that was published this week. It's called White, um, Rural White Rage. R white Rural Rage. White yeah. Rural Rage. I, I was actually looking for a way to, to bring okay. that up. It, it's well, insane. Well, I did. White said rural he rage. Gre Gre you you go for it. I well, already I mean, fin fin finished the point on that because it's it's just about hating white rural people, and what they really mean is white poor people. Yeah. Because when you describe a white rural person, you're, what you really mean is white poor people, like who live on a small farm. It's like or urban something. for whites. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and <laughs> most, of the, most of the country, white. most of the country is white and rural. So yeah. when they're saying hate white and rural, they're saying hate the country. But they, like, in the book, because the, the authors were, I believe it was MSNBC uh, a couple days ago, they were just describing how white people are the most likely to engage in political violence. I saw that. They're the most likely to believe conspiracy theories. They're the most likely to have fringe beliefs and, and question science. And like, okay, first of all, since when are white people the most likely to engage in political violence? Okay, like maybe white liberals, yeah. but white liberals are not white rural people. Nope. Those are two very distinct Unless groups. Unless they're woodland groups. Unless they're, Unless they're in the woods. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, liberals are the ones that call literally during the entire Trump presidency were calling for violence. Uh, Maxine Waters, everybody, you get in their faces. You got, Can you imagine if anybody from the other side said, hey, get in their faces? That's why I absolutely love when the shit comes back and, and bites them in the ass, like AOC recently yeah, was. Uh, let that. me explain something to you guys. I can't tell you how many times I watched that because all that she posted, because she posted a couple of years ago on, on when it was Twitter, she's like, yeah, guys, get in everybody's face. And now they're doing it to her after she watched the movie. And she's like, this isn't right. Like, well, that's what you get, you bartender. That's what you get. That's what you get. Good for you. Because I'm, listen, I'm pro getting back in their faces. I'm sick and tired, mind you. I'm not left, I'm not right, I don't have a side, but the other side, from what I'm seeing, doesn't do anything. Get your asses up and go and fight and bark, fight, do, do something. And they're calling for it, no, never gets in trouble. Uh, and this is the thing that uh, liberal protesters and our do-nothing authorities won't recognize. Like Shane just mentioned, if they keep up these attacks, they're blowing up pipelines, they're destroying power plants, which... Funnily enough, you destroyed the generator of a Tesla factory. They're probably going to have to use a gas-burning generator to power it back vehicle, up. It's an electric vehicle, no yeah. less. For, well, what are the carbon emissions yeah. of setting a Tesla exactly. on fire, I wonder? No shit. But if they continue doing that, they're destroying pipelines, they're destroying generators, they're destroying water sources, all this stuff. That is a violent attack on you. That is an immediate threat to your life because people will die. Yeah. People will ha experience great hardship because of that. But... Because they're, oh, they're not being threatening. These are peaceful, nonviolent eco protesters who just happen to be burning things down. And assaults on property are not assaults on people. It's, it's the, the scaled up political version of, Connor. if you guys have siblings where they're like, well, yeah. I'm not touching you, I'm not <laughs> touching you. Yeah. That, yeah that's, that's an attack. What it is. When they are not touching you, but they are in your face harassing you, that actually is a version of assault. Connor, this, this is what happens. Like, my favorite people is rural people of all colors. You know, mm -hmm. they're the best. The, the further you get away from the food source, the dumber you become. These people mm -hmm. don't know how the world works. They don't know how pipeline works. They don't know how food is made. They don't know anything. So the, the further away you're from, from the cow, the further away you're from the field, the dumber you are. And I was watching MSNBC. Uh, no, I, I wasn't watching. I was I watched a that? clip because yeah, I wouldn't okay. watch MSNBC anyways. But the way they were talking about white rural voters, they literally said they're a threat to democracy. Those people, you know what their number one goal is? 
to le be left alone. That's what they, th 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 that's exactly what they want. Yeah. They want to be left alone with their fields, left alone with their children, left alone with their Bible, left alone with anything. That's precisely they, why they're a threat, because they don't want to join up with all the They, exactly. they want to be left alone. Exactly. Exactly. Was, uh, of someone being left alone. I think it was Oren McIntyre who, who wisely observed that the people with an agenda will always beat the people who just want to be left alone, because the agenda will band together to do something. Whereas the people who want to be left alone are very individualistic and they don't form groups. You mm -hmm. don't see mass Republican demonstrations because everybody just wants to do their thing. Yeah, and then it sucks. And, and those people that want to be left alone, that want to be on the woods, that want to grow their own shit, mm -hmm. now they're going after all these people, yeah. all the farmers, all the land, because they're like, hey, listen, we want you to eat our poison. Who the hell are you yeah. to try to live off the land and do your own thing? Eat our Doritos. Eat our, <laughs> eat our Doritos. Eat our yeah. Doritos. Eat R our fruit that's R raw milk is the sign of an extremist. Eat our gay Doritos. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, but, but, but and who knows? The other nefarious people that might be tr trickled in there that are trying to destroy Elon, because I mean, and mm -hmm. again, Elon Musk, and I've said this before, I respect him, I love what he's done, thank you for giving us the platform. He just, did you guys hear about this? He just met with Donald Trump. Yeah, boy. Two days, well, yeah, yeah, boy, but let me explain something to you. This guy might be a methodical setting up his pieces because the guy that says he's worried about AI is the same guy that's putting in the neural link. Mm -hmm. The same guy that's saying all this type of stuff can be, well, he's meeting with the president, and guess what he's gonna say? Hey, I'll give you the money, I'll fund everything for you, but don't, don't ever go against my satellites that I wanna set up all these low orbit satellites for all the 5G, 6G, 7G, whatever the Gs are, a lot of G, a lot of Gs. <laughs> I love my money, because I mean, who knows, we just have to be very, very careful with that type of relationship. I don't trust anybody 100%. No, I love no, Trump, nobody. you can't trust anybody. I, when people go, oh, with my life. No, 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 you don't know because you're not in their family, you don't know them. So I'm just saying we have to be wary of that, but I think that relationship is pretty, pretty. But listen, if you're building a puzzle, yeah, and Trump is a piece for the puzzle, it's probably a great picture, dude. It's probably a, it's yeah. probably a great, yeah. great picture. I, I love you guys, is. and we're gonna move on, but do you guys see the interview with him? And see, uh, Trump was just interviewed yesterday, and they go, we heard you met with Elon. And he goes, I love what he's doing. I love the rockets. They come up and come back. He goes, he, be, he loves it. He really loves I mean, it. He knows what he's doing. Truth social is better than X, but I do like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, but hey, he's a good guy. He loves rockets and so on. That um, might be Trump's biggest lie right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Truth what, social has never been a big, again, the big so, lie. Truth social is about to get him $4 billion. So well, you wouldn't, him. You wouldn't, oh, shoot. I was banned from Truth Social. <laughs> How do you get banned from that? Because when I tried to create my account, I was outside of the United States, oh, and it's United States only. So now I can't sign up. Oh, wow. damn. I'll give you my email. You got deported. Um, deported from Truth Social. Okay. I, I made my first password on that app uh, a DeSantis campaign slogan. Oh, shut so, up. Wow. Just, just because it was funny. Bam. That's funny. All right, guys. We're going to move on to our next uh, story. Connor, we talked about the movie Dune. I told Alicia I've watched the first one three times. Sometimes it's just playing in the background. You went to go see Dune mm -hmm. 2, and I want to know what your take and what do you think? <laughs> I see a holy war against Hollywood liberalism spreading across the galaxy like an unquenchable fire. <laughs> I, I don't say this lightly. Dune Part 2 might be one of the best movies I've seen in decades. Wow. Or, uh, they say and you're only 20. But only 27. So, <laughs> yeah. so, since I was seven years old, might be yeah. the best movie I've seen. <laughs> Two um, whole decades. Yes, but what, what this movie represents, it, it, first of all, Denis Villeneuve is a fantastic director. Uh, if you look at his other work, obviously Dune Part 1, Blade Runner 2049, Sicario, Sicario Arrival. Uh, th these movies are all great, and they, they stand out as being spectacles. Mm -hmm. Like, th this one in particular shows, it, re it reminds you why people go to the movies, to see big, visual, stunning things. Um, I'm, I'm not going to hype up the movie too much, because I'm, it, it, I know it, it's very polarizing. A lot of people hated the first one because it's slow and it's weird. But don't go into it expecting Star Wars. Don't go into it expecting some big modern science fiction drama. It's based on one of the most esoteric science fiction books ever written. And it's weird. I, I will say I, it's weird. It is a weird book that got turned into a weird movie where one of the more normal things that happens in this one is the main character's mom drinks space ayahuasca and has a psychic conversation with her unborn baby. Oh, wow. so, so very, very unusual things happen. But uh, my main takeaways from the movie, it's unapologetically pro-life. Like really? I just said, it, it confirms that unborn babies are real people, real conscious souls that uh, have a right to live. The other main takeaway is that the unborn infants cry out for intergalactic holy war. 
I'm on board with that. They want some, they want yes. some intergalactic jihad. Yeah. Meanwhile, pretty much. Meanwhile, but they're so wait. What a, what an interesting take for a Hollywood movie of that magnitude yeah, it, it, to go that route. It, 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 they don't even mean to confirm it that way, but it is. And in its opening weekend, it grossed uh, 82.5 million dollars, which is not not as much as other movies have done in the past. Like it's you can tell the movie industry is still kind of in decline it's a little bit. It's compared, it's the Com- most this yeah. year. Compare it to an- anything else this year. Like, basically since the beginning of December, it's the best opening weekend, and it's on track to more than make back its budget of $190 million. Internationally, it made $178 million. Oh, so they're already good. They're, 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 no, they need to make a lot more than that to break even on, you know, advertising costs yeah. and all that. But it, they're well on its way, and it's, it's worth it. I'm planning on seeing it at least two more times. Wow. Uh, it, it's one of those things that m- drives you to a movie theater. Well, talk about how you recently wrote an article about yeah. how yeah. old shows and old movies mm-hmm. prove to be more popular than new ones on all streaming Exactly. Platforms. That's that's what I wanted to get to because I have the data. But go, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say The Biz Dog, great channel. Subscribe to The Biz Dog. He did, I mean, it's coming out this week. He did a whole thing that last month was the lowest. Are you going to say this? No, to, to uh, it, was, it was the lowest grossing uh, box office in mm-hmm. 20 years. Wow, oh, wow. last yeah. month? Yeah. yeah. And why wow. do you think this whole woke BS that people are just freaking tired of all this agenda driven bullshit? Uh, like Disney, it's like I am, I am baffled that a company of the stature of Disney, from the owners to the board to, to whoever is in charge, let something after the second flop, I would have been like, all right, guys, time out. <laughs> it's not working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After <laughs> a billion dollars, I mean, they're, where, where are they, Connor? If you guys remember the numbers of how much money has Disney lost in the past? Oh, that's f- four yeah. years. Yeah, go go back and uh, watch the Gina Carano interview on the yeah. PBD yeah. podcast. Yeah. Uh, that'll tell you the numbers. Billion, it's, it's ridiculous. Bi- billions of dollars. It's yeah. hundreds of. Uh, it might have been a hundred. Whatever. How about this? Even one billion is too much. It's, I'm actually, because me, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious, and if any of you guys want to go, I'm watching that movie tonight with Kelly because of someone like you telling me in the office, like, yo, Vinny, you, you took off your glasses. That's serious. Yeah. When, the, when, the, when that yeah. happens, mm-hmm. there's some mm-hmm. serious shit going to come out of the mouth. And I was like, it's refreshing that you said something where there was no woke, it wasn't any woke yeah. agenda getting and pushed the, down. The, your the throat. only thing people could even try to argue is woke is that they, they race swapped the love interest, Chani, and is now played by Zendaya. But here's the thing. Zendaya's a very good actress. Yeah. So she is a talented character in a very well-written part. Very good. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was played, uh, Chani was played by Sean Young in the 1980s version. Yeah. uh, And that's the girl from the original Blade Runner. Yeah. Uh, The the David Lynch version of Dune is very weird. Yeah. Weirder than this one. Almost weirder than the book. As Lynch is. As 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 Lynch has been known to do. So Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's 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 hard to go back and watch that one. But yeah, there's there's no egregious feminism. They don't even have sex scenes in it. Like there's there's not overly uh, explicit content in it or anything. It's just a very good movie. And uh, referencing back to what Shane mentioned, like I said, there th- this might kickstart the holy war against wokeness because if you look on the streaming side of things, uh, Nielsen just put out uh, the 2022 st- or 2023 streaming data. And it shows that shows from the 10 plus years ago are doing better than modern shows. Wow. The, the, the number one streamed show, uh, as you can see, it was Suits. Now, granted, Suits uh, got put on Netflix, and that was part of what made it get big. And also, of course, th- there was the fact that Meghan Markle was on it. It, it was a, a B-level part for her yeah and you know it's not like she was a standout performance but people are interested in her they went back and watched it can i interject here yeah i think netflix should have should have a feature to take her out of the show mm-hmm. like you could press a button so it skips all the scenes with her that's, that's so what's funny. stopping me from watching that show well they're they're, they're making a a suit spin-off because of how popular it was and she's not going to be on that so Good. there you go alicia what do you think do you watch old shows mostly yes yeah. Old, I like old shows better, like Friends and The mm-hmm. Office and all those shows. Like, um, I prefer to watch than any new show that comes out because literally I had stopped watching uh, This Is Us. We Were you and I talking about that? Uh, we've talked about it a couple of times. Which one is This, this is, is Us? This Is Us. It's like it shows like 
uh, past highlights of like their life and growing up. And then it's, uh, it was good? so good. It was so good. And then season four, they got so just COVID, mask, oh, wear God. your mask, get your vaccine, this. On and the show? On the show. And I literally had to stop watching yeah, it. I, I, don't, I don't have... Uh, cable tv at my house it's ju- it's just no, all, they put all it on st- netflix i know it's, it's just all streaming apps and everything but i gave up on network dramas a long time ago um and back when i i lived at home with my parents many years ago my mom was watching one of the network hospital dramas i can't remember which one Grey's anatomy. it wasn't Grey's anatomy it was uh, one of the one of the newer ones on nbc or whatever uh, Flatline, line. Yeah, I don't even know every, that every is. single network has at least two hospital dramas. The ER. Yeah. 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 But the, 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 one of the, the resolutions of a B storyline on this episode was that the gay hospital psychiatrist advised a couple that incest is okay if you didn't know about it beforehand. Jeez. And that was where that ended. Great writing. And it was yeah. like, oh, you guys didn't realize you were related when you got married? That's nah, fine. Just don't, have, just don't have kids. Yeah. Can I yeah. do something else? You know what's not on that list? And this is a problem in my household. And Korea is also canceled. Okay? Not true. <laughs> my wife quit Western dramas and mm-hmm. started watching Korean dramas. Really? Mm. And I... I, I well, what you mean? You mean reading? No, no, no. Like, she's no, reading no, it. No, no, no. Can't see anything. Korean watch. drama TV is... Yeah, yeah you're watching read. Dude, she's learning Korean now. That's oh, so wow. funny. I was like, if you're fluent, I'm going to take you there. Yeah, for sure. But I won't go because I hate, I don't like Koreans anymore because she's <laughs> obsessed with it. But but the thing is that I did watch, sorry. Like, he's anti-Spanish he's Spanish girls. girls Korean. You're anti-Koreans. Maybe it would just be easier to list the nationalities you're pro. Yeah. <laughs> America. That's, that's, it. That's, that's it. That's right. Uh, but what I'm saying, like, I did watch a few of the shows. Like, I didn't watch the whole show, but the messages they're pointing out there, they're super positive. You know, like, uh, guy-girl relationship, like, working hard. Like, always the winner and, the, like, the love interest is the guy that's been doing well for himself, the guy that goes to the gym, that is the CEO of the company, like, the well-put-together guy. And everyone that is lazy and whatever, they're the losers. They're the villains. Mm-hmm. So they're on to something. And, I mean, what they've done with that country, that, that was the worst country, after putting a wall, walls again, walls are great. Walls are great. They put the wall in and they skyrocketed, yeah. you know, and they keep on the up. So, like, maybe I like Koreans. Yeah. You know yeah. what? All maybe right. Like we got, maybe we got you them like them. Nice. Maybe so, you so like to them. reference it back to the that chart we had before uh, from Nielsen, Kelly, if you want to throw that back up just real quick so we can, we can look at the amount of time that people spent watching these shows. Suits was the number one pick in, uh, in 2023. 57.7 billion streaming minutes. Wow. Wait, say, that, that, say that one more time. 57.7 billion streaming minutes. So if you took every minute that every viewer spent watching that show and combined it, 57.7 billion. Then uh, the next two were tied between Friends and Gilmore Girls d- d- or down the list. Oh, my uh, wife was add yeah. a lot of those minutes to Gilmore yeah. Girls. Uh, yeah. we, we watched Friends last year on the DVD collection, so we didn't contribute to that, but my wife does love Gilmore Girls. <laughs> and I am ashamed to admit it, but I've watched more episodes than I, I care to acknowledge, <laughs> and I can't say I hate it. So then you look at other, other things. Bluey on Disney+. Plus. What, what does Bluey have going for it? It's no, a more modern no show, idea. but... Okay, if you guys are unfamiliar with Bluey, adults watch this show unironically without their kids because of how wholesome it is. Oh, give it, me a it, break. It, it's, there, there's no wokeness. There's no agenda. It's just family stuff. The, the dad, the, the, they're all dogs. But the, 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 Thanks to Claire. No, Wait, are you anti dogs too? No, nah, dogs are fine. Dogs are <laughs> what? They get the Korean they dogs? Get the they're Korean dogs. They can get into that. You know, uh, they just <laughs> this year yeah. banned eating dogs there. In Korea? Wow. Good yeah. job. It's the, nice. the wall did it. Yeah. The, the wall. wall. Yeah. But the, 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 the dad on this show is capable and smart, and he's not an idiot. He's not the, the typical little kid show dad, but like other ones up there, NCIS, Grey's Anatomy, Coco Melon, Big Bang Theory, all shows that started a long time ago, mm-hmm. and they are just more popular, and everything that comes out now, they're, they're spending, I think, uh, the Amazon Rings of Power series that got rid of everything that was good about Lord of the Rings and replaced it with an annoying girl boss. Oh, God. Uh, was like, it was like a couple billion dollars for the budget of that show. And it sucks. Yeah. It flopped. Yeah. They're but, losing money left um, and right. In, in total, across all streaming platforms last year, Americans spent 21 million years streaming content. If you take all the minutes we spent across all platforms, Holy 21 million. Yeah. And I get... 
these shows are great. But let's acknowledge that's a lot. Yeah. Um, you think? And also, uh, why do you think they're so interested in controlling the narratives in these shows mm -hmm. when we know how much time people spend exactly. watching? Exactly. I mean, it's like you're already in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. It's just You're there, yeah. yeah like you're you're living in a virtual headset, world. But you are as plugged in yeah. as someone who does. I don't want to be that guy. Be it. But I am. And I'm glad you're going to watch Dune again, because I'm not going to watch it. Why not? Because it's 180 minutes. I have a 90 minute limit. On what, what you're going to watch half, get half your money back, leave and come watch the other half. The thing is, like, come on, directors, keep it shorter, keep it moving. Like 180 minutes is too long. It's yeah. too long. But we need YouTube shorts version. Yeah. 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 Maybe nah. have Gen Z nah. brain. You could watch it during your two hour well, commute. Con, the, the, the fact that Connor said it's, it's worth, listen, let me say something to you. When somebody says to watch it, I'm watching it. So it's, it's worth the time. Go out and see it. I'm going to, I'm going to go watch it. All right, guys, last story. Last we saved the best for last. Thank because. You. I mean, honestly, I think everybody here is pretty annoyed because you've been talking so much during Aww. this whole, mm -hmm. this Thank whole thing. You. Thank so, you guys. Alicia, my time is shine. Alicia, <laughs> Alicia, Ryan Garcia. It's he's had what some would say a week, but uh, could you fill us in on what the hell's going on? What what? Yeah. Because some of us are worried. Some of us. I met him. We were all there at the office. What's happening? Yeah. So Ryan Garcia has had quite the week um, in the news. He had a press conference for his upcoming fight in April. And he just went crazy at this press conference and was called out for doing drugs and doing cocaine. Okay. Drugs. Okay. And, yeah, like, and, he looks like and, he's on, I mean, he looks like he's, and, I can tell who's on yeah, cocaine. Yeah, he was really, you know, spazzing. Oh. And he was like, no, I only drink, I only smoke. And Jen went crazy started yelling at people in the audience and then that's when you can tell like things really got fired up and then the next day on his social media that's when he released um that video uh, um the writing and was like um to uh, close the curtains and that's when everyone couldn't get in contact with him people thought he was having anxiety attack um mental health problems you know something going on and then he disappeared and then he, a video came out and he was like, I'm okay, I don't have my phone, they closed my bank accounts, my cards. So we don't know if it's a pub publicity uh, stunt or if it's just like he really is going through it and they're trying to like silence him or what's going on. They put up, he tweeted something, um, Kelly, the... One billion dollars. What is this? Yeah. So he is projected to make a billion dollars, and uh, I think. When was or, this? This was so. Was this the was the second, and he was like, "I'm projected to make a million dollars. If you don't believe me, I'll be posting proof." Something I thought of as a kid many times. After that, didn't know it was the realm of my possibility. Thank you, God, not for the money. Just basically saying, like a little. Like, I'm going to be a billionaire. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think that's true. Like, he's nowhere no, near he's a billion. No, he's not near a billion He's nowhere dollars. near, I wouldn't even say 20 million. No, there's okay. no way. So he's he's obviously going through something. But oh, you haven't he, even gotten to the, the, the weird video that he posted. No, it's there's like a, a lot of yeah, weird We slid stuff his throat that, and threw him in a trunk. Yeah, you know, so kind of then stuff. that yeah. came out. And I, we don't have that one, but it was just, like, all these different letters, 666, all over <laughs> the screen just really weird and then he went on um what's on x the room spaces. with spaces space. yeah with andrew tate i heard it <laughs> and that's when he called out the bohemian grove and brought that into the conversation of which is weird because that has nothing like bohemian grove aside and I don't want to say what he was saying, but yeah, keep saying he, what you were saying. Yeah, so he was basically saying that he was, when he was younger, he was... Taking advantage yeah, of at taking two advantage years old. at two years old, and then this is what's happening now. And it kind of feels like, and I want you to tell me what you guys think about, like, he has this upcoming fight. Like, is it, is he doing this for attention? Or is he really, are they, like, trying to have, like, an intervention with him, and he doesn't want to accept that he's actually having problems and is going crazy or he's actually just like spiraling uh, from the drugs. I, and pa Patrick, brought, pa Pat brought this up yesterday and I and you saw me, I was pushing back because I'm like, if this is your angle of trying to bring eyeballs for a fight, 
It's absolutely the worst thing I've ever seen. And, and I've watched boxing since I was a kid, since yeah. Mike Tyson. This is not, it's, A, I think he's having something mentally going on. I definitely do think, because, you know, we, we were hanging out with him at the, at the Manek thing in Soho House. Yeah. He, he looked like he was having fun. He looked like he had life in him. He looked like, after that, the video I saw where he's like, he looks gone. Like somebody's videos, telling him what to yeah. do. Whoever's on his team, I think is slipping big time. Because think about it. He's the, the money maker. I don't, and I hate when there's like 30 yes men around you. If you're doing that and you're speaking like that, and I don't, you saw the, the spaces? I did see it. It was him, Andrew Tate, and a bunch of other people. They sound concerned for him too. Mm -hmm. This to me seems like either, it's a series of, of three things. I think, you know, and again, you're a boxer. You get punched in your, in your, in your noodle uh, enough times. Who knows what's happening mm -hmm. with your brain? The brain's a very fragile thing. I think... Doing drugs and partying and drinking. He lives in my. He lives in Florida. I, I think he lives in LA. He, LA or I mean, he's like wherever yeah. LA. Just as worse as Miami when it comes to drugs. I just think I, I don't think there's a ploy. If Pat mentioned the fact that it might be him trying to get out of fight, but there's so many other ways to get out of fight. Guess what? My hand. I, I sprained my hand. The the fight is in a month. Yeah. A month. But there's no there, way. There is contract in place. Uh, as a, as a, you know, I'm a, I'm a UFC fan. He's not in his best shape at all. He's not ready for the fight. He's drinking alcohol. He's like drinking in front alcohol, of our faces. partying. And um, Pat also said, and he, he had a, made a great point, that when a fighter loses a big fight like this, they go through it. Yeah. You know, like... Uh, depression. Uh, Mike, depression, my Mike Tyson, like a bunch oh, of guys. Oh, suicidal. They get that, crazy. That they're at the top of their game. They lose one big fight. This is a huge fight because uh, they're three... Three. Three and they, they, they fought six times. They fought seven times. Time. I'm sorry, they fought six times. They're three and three, and, yeah, and three they're and younger three. amateur. So, like, this, this winner takes it all. Yeah. Like, they, I don't think they're going to fight again because no, they only need to fight a, twice, too. Like, yeah. this is a tiebreaker. This is so, it's, it. a, it's big pressure. Uh, I also know someone, I have an inside scoop that I, I talked to this person uh, a few weeks ago, and I was like, because I saw him on the podcast, I was like, what's going on? Um, his body language was kind of off. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's very rare to see someone like that with Pat. Like, um, he did touch his phone, uh, very tissue. Drinking. Yeah, drinking. Well, I mean, you're drinking a lot. It, oh, you should was, be, a fighter doesn't weird. drink. So I asked this person, I was like, you know him, uh, what's going on? And he's like, he's not well. He's not well. But at the same time, being 2024, like, this is a year of, of like, I don't believe it. But I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whatever he said, I don't believe it. Yeah. But if it's real, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, because you, you heard know? some of the well, stuff that he was saying. Oh, you yeah, said, no. And then he went on a rampage today on Twitter X and was like, Elon Musk is anti-Christ. Like, went crazy with the tweets he was putting out. What did he, he said, he, Elon Musk is the anti -Christ. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. So first he tweeted that. And then this was all just back to back today. Praise for Jerusalem. Uh, the Bible requires you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Dude, and what about Gaza kids being killed? Oh, yeah. God. Tate actually made a good point uh, in the space where he, he said, basically, Ryan, listen, we all want to believe you because we know the Bohemian Grove is real. We know evil things happen in the world. But what it sounds like is you're just combining a bunch of stuff that you heard on the Internet yeah. all together into this narrative about yourself and... Uh, we know that you've been having problems recently, so it's kind of hard for us all to believe you. If you want to make these claims, you got to back it up with a lot of evidence. And Garcia did say that he has evidence on his phone, but guess what? He can't get in mm. touch with his phone, so, you know, it's going to take a while for us to I, believe him and think that it's, it's not it's, just it's an episode. It's the episode. same, dude, logic I, behind every schizo drug addict but. theory that circulates on the Internet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of, of course, I don't want to talk crap about a guy who could not only beat the hell out of me, but also knows what building I work in. <laughs> but uh, That's so funny. Stakes are high. Um, yeah, he, he walked right past me when he was on the podcast to get into the vault. But, yeah, like he, he said the right buzzwords. Like, we, we don't normally talk about ridiculous, weird drug addict conspiracy theories on the internet. When we talk about things, we usually try to bring evidence or, or talk about the big picture stuff. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're talking about it is because he said the right buzzwords. Like, he said Bohemian Grove. He said the global elites mm -hmm. held me down and forced me to watch child abuse and sacrifice. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he said the right things to the right people, like Andrew Tate. And you got to be out there for Andrew Tate to not buy into that. Like, this is the guy who 
He's going to jail for the Matrix yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's kind of real. But you, you, it's bare. Uh, of course. <laughs> that, yeah, that, but, but that's I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what Andrew Tate is an out there guy. Yeah. Right. For you to be blow past him and be like, whoa, 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 we need some evidence. Yeah. Yeah, like, up. you got to be nuts. Yeah. If Andrew Tate and there. Alex Jones are going, yeah, I don't know yeah. about yeah. that. There's a problem. Alex Jones was the guy who did the undercover video that kind of blew Bohemian Grove wide open. Oh, yeah. And then he interviewed one of the princes, right? And he was like, you were that guy that was there, and you shouldn't have been there. Shut up. You know, on demon. a positive note, I feel bad about this occurrence. He's a he's a good kid. He's a mm -hmm. fighter. He took his family out of like poverty, poverty. fighting through the thing. Mm -hmm. He's an athlete, and um, I really hope the best for him. Oh yeah. no, I'm, oh, I'm with oh, I'm with you. I I hope to God it's just yeah. it's just it's unbelievable to me that somebody would go. A, this, I don't think this is a, a fight promotion tactic. There's no, there's no way. There's meant. There's something Mental. mentally wrong for you to say the stuff that you're saying about uh, somebody holding you down, and you have to watch children getting abused. That means they're holding your eyes open, like in a, a Clockwork Orange. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it didn't make sense. Why but would they let you go after that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. They would. Once you're there, yeah, you're done. But it yeah. just looks like wherever they interviewed him the first time, or the, when he actually did a response, he's like. Like somebody's telling him, okay, go. And he's like, hey, I just, you know, I got my phone. I'm still alive. No shit. Yeah. We see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not a hologram. You're right in front of us. So. And then the second video, he really, he really looked like he was. Went to town. He, yeah. <laughs> like he, was he like on? Cause I, no, I, I, he I, just, I he looked tired. He looked rough. Huh? Rough. Yeah. Dude, and guys, and I'm telling you right now, one hit of. Ecstasy, Molly, cocaine, whatever it is. All it takes is one. I saw a video a while ago on one of these like A and E, where this kid took one thing of uh, ecstasy at a party, and they're doing one of these, you know, documentaries yeah. about him. He oh, he ducks all day because he thinks a black <laughs> bird is flying yeah. by him. It, it, like, it takes one. It does. One thing yeah. to hit the right part of your brain. That's what and, and yeah. I remember when, when when Shane brought that up about ayahuasca. Everybody. Said he was nuts and didn't didn't buy oh, it. Oh, I believe him. That's why I'll but never do ayahuasca. My message yeah. to him is: Ryan, cut the booze, cut the carbs, go to the gym, get in your best shape ever, and kick his ass. That's, I that's mean, what I, it is. I I yep. I, I 100% co-sign yeah. on what you said. Uh, or for the sake of your newborn child, just yeah, yeah. Tight, yeah. make him proud, dude. Make yeah. him yeah. proud. Yeah, and right, right, and I, and I do not get it. There's, you know, you're in a dark place right now. You are mentioning God and Jesus a lot. I think you're gonna take it way more serious. Than what you're saying, go seek help. Go to a church. Go mm -hmm. talk to an actual priest. All the friends, all these people in this corner, bro. I know there's one guy uh, that I that I know is has been trying. But when somebody's at that stature, all they have around them are yes men that are like, yeah, 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 yes, champ, yes, champ, yes, champ, and don't want to grab the dude. And like, some of them are probably scared and like, hey, listen, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You have to stop and get help. Ted, by the way, this fight is done. There's yeah. no way this fight is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So all the people are gonna lose all that money. Oscar De La Hoya, you're, you're standing behind him in a lot of these pre press conferences. You just step up to the front of him and be like, yo, dude, yeah. you're losing it. What Cut he, the show. Cut he, the show. <laughs> what he needs is someone like my grandma, who uh, one time she found Mike Tyson when he was in his, one of his worst despairs in uh, Las Vegas. And she, was, uh, she went up to him, and she's this little Italian lady, going up to this, you know, killer and she just goes Mike you you better take better care of yourself <laughs> and she's she like said that to she him? goes you're surrounded by people who don't have your best interests at heart and you need to think twice before you less listen to them tell you what to do and he was like thank you kind woman I'll uh <laughs> and look where he is now he's oh, he, at the bar. Yeah. So, he needs someone like that he knows yeah. where to find us we put him in contact is yeah. she still around oh she's still around okay. that's it she's got plenty <laughs> of advice that's what he needs he needs a grandma she'll talk his ear off for and half an hour next time God Pat and Tyson sit down together we can we can bring that up hey you yeah. remember when Shane's grandma found you in Vegas. Yes. Let's find her in. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we we hope you find the help you need, Ryan. Yeah, from, 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 from the social video. media manager herself. Yeah. Yes, I value him. And that. and if by extreme remote possibility you have evidence of all this stuff, yeah. hit, hit us up. We'll publish yeah. it for you. Send like, it our way. Up, like Umberto said. Yeah. Find it hard to believe, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. So we're here for you, dude. Yeah. No. And yeah. And it's and, and again, we, all we can do is pray, but. You know, I, I felt, dude, I had a weird feeling yesterday. I'm like, dude, somebody like that, that's going down that destruction uh -huh. where I, I was worried that you, we were going to get like a late breaking thing. God forbid this guy, something bad happened to him. But uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Before yeah. evening the other day, I sent it to you, and I was like, "Wait, this is kind of weird." Kind of, kind of weird and scary and because yeah. it's saying when you're when you're, listen, because once your brain goes there, there's no coming back. Mm -hmm. That's like yeah, paranoid then it's schizophrenia like, type yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah. But uh, our thoughts and prayers with them, guys. I had a great time. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. I want to thank Sebastian, uh, Doctor Sebastian Gorka, for being here, guys. Um, and we keep saying this: this year is going to be uh, insane. So listen, guys, love always wins love each other take take care of each other look past all the bs and um i think at the end of the day we're gonna be we're gonna be fine and the future uh, the future does look bright guys i am performing april 11th at the miami improv okay humberto's gonna put the the link link in the description link buy the, your tickets they're gonna please run out. Get your they're gonna tickets. run out we're gonna sell this place out kelly's gonna be there everybody's gonna be here alicia you're gonna be there good shane connor you know humberto it. guys I love you guys to death. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, hit the notification button. We got a lot of guests coming up in the upcoming weeks. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Peace and love.